Hey, my name is Robert Alexander. I am the co-founder and CEO of Auralab, and we create healing technologies. That's right, healing technologies. It might sound like a little bit of an oxymoron when we think about what it feels like to sit in front of our laptops and to pull out our phones, particularly in this post-pandemic world that we live in. We get so many messages about the nefarious feelings of when you go down the social media rabbit hole, taking social media detoxes and cleanses. And what I want to impart today is the fact that our technology can be so deeply healing and so deeply transformative. In fact, Marshall McLuhan talks about the sensorium. He talks about the way that the shoe naturally extends the foot, the way that our glasses naturally extend our eyes. And by extension, our devices, our computers, and our phones are natural extensions of ourselves, if you think about it, right? The way that we connect with each other, the way that we connect with ourselves, is defined so deeply by the way that we engage with our devices. In my whole life, I've had this unique relationship where I've been super creative in the way I've loved to make music, I love to make art, I love to just get on my computer and I love to play. And I also recognize that that's not how everyone engages with their devices. And so I just wanna share a couple ways that my tech has showed up in my life in a really healing and powerful way and impart some ideas that you might also reframe your relationship with technology. So over the course of my PhD at University of Michigan, I was working with these NASA research scientists, and we were studying the sun by turning it into sound. It's this process called sonification. If you look at this image behind me, it's got this exploding sun with the color and the light and everything. So this represents that process of taking the data and transforming it in a way where we're using our ears to suddenly understand outer space in a new way. And we were able to make new discoveries about outer space by just listening to the sun. And so here I was, I was in my kind of open, infinite, boundless, playful space as a creator, when suddenly I received a phone call. And it was from my sister, Amanda. And this is a phone call that was the hardest of my life because she told me that my mother had passed away. And I remember just collapsing, just crumpling on the ground, you know, not wanting it to be true. I remember just being in this puddle on the floor, just wishing I could just melt through the earth. And for the next week, my family came out and they just wrapped me up in so much love and so much support and so much care. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't want this to end, this feeling of being connected with my family. I want to have this my whole life because they all live on different parts of the world. What I did was I just opened my device then and I just gathered everyone around. And I pulled up the sound recorder and I just said, can we tell stories? Can we just share stories about my mother that maybe I haven't heard before? And so for over two hours, I listened as my uncles and cousins, and just close family friends, all shared stories about how my mother had touched their lives in some way. And then when I went back, I did what I love to do so deeply, I took up my tech and I just cut up all of the audio into individual tracks. And I took photos, I went through photo albums and was just seeing the faces of my family, seeing the faces of my mother. And I took the pictures of the pictures and I made those the album art for this album that I called The Memory Circle. And so over the next series of months, as I was just moving through the grieving process, I would just go into my room, turn out the lights, get underneath the sheets, be in my little ball, and listen to the voices and the laughter of the people that I love so dearly. And here we've got my cousin Molly. She's reaching into this bowl to make what my mother called Molly cookies. She tells this story in the memory circle about how my mother would ask, have you continued to make these Molly cookies? She would check in, and the fact that that interaction, though so brief, became a formative part of what it means to feel important. And to be able to have a person that you share with deeply all of your life experiences can really contribute to your profound sense of self-worth. And I then moved all the way to the other side of the planet, leaving all of my friends and family behind, and I started teaching at Hong Kong University, right? So suddenly I didn't have that environment that was naturally supportive in the way that it had been for many, many years. And I woke up one morning and I thought, what can I do to bring that natural sense of support back into my life? And I realized there are probably some words that I could hear right now that would help to remind me of that 
sense of connection, help to remind me what's important. And so I went online to a text-to-speech tool and I just typed in all the messages that I thought would help to uplift me. And I created a new set of guided meditations. This one's called Deepest Truth, Walking in Public. Because I would just walk on my way to work, pop this one on. It would remind me of kindness. It would remind me of gratitude. It would remind me to look around and see all the faces of the people around me as fundamentally innocent. And these little reminders, the ability to engage with my tech and remember who I am, remember what I care about, is something that I've learned so many ways to infuse into my life. My business partner actually turned me on to this app called Yap, where you can just have it give you nine random reminders throughout the day. So this one right here, what are you grateful for? And just ask yourself right now, take a deep breath, what are you grateful for? Anything that comes to mind, what are you grateful for? Even just contemplating that question can invoke this feeling of warmth in your body, this feeling of being connected someplace deep, somewhere really vital and important. And so when I ask myself this question, what am I grateful for? I think about the technology that I've been able to develop with my amazing team over the last several years. And that technology is Breathscape. This tech takes the breath and turns it into music in real time just using a phone. So I can place this device against my body, take a deep breath in, and exhale. It generates visuals, it generates music in real time. It's like I've got an orchestra right there writing music for me in that moment. And I've recorded the voice of my aunt so that I can play back her voice reading these words that touch my heart so deeply. And I can take her anywhere that I go. And I've had ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs, you know, life. <laughs> and yet throughout all of it, I've had this technology to help bring me back to that place of deep peace and deep relaxation. And so if I impart anything with this talk, it's think about your relationship with your tech. Does it feel like your tech is supporting you? Does it feel like your tech is nurturing and nourishing you? And I'd also like to invite you to try something like this Breathscape technology because it's amazing to hear from all the users right now, people who have migraines that they've been struggling with and even medication hasn't been working and they try this and their migraines start to ameliorate. They're struggling with anxiety. They're having sleepless nights and they try the app and it finally helps them to get a grip. And so for me, it's been so profound to be able to take something that started as just this healing tool for myself to keep my head above water and to keep me in alignment with what feels like my true path, to be able to share that with the world and to have it resonate with others. So thank you so much for your time today. And just keep asking that question, what am I grateful for? Thank <sighs> you.